Hey, welcome back to our podcast, your go-to source for all things real estate and lifestyle in the heart of Fort Worth, Texas. I'm Jackson Christian Berry. And I'm Jean Christian Berry. <laughs> and together we're here to guide you through the vibrant world of Fort Worth and surrounding suburb living. We believe in creating a community where everyone feels at home. And that's why we're committed to bringing you honest, expert advice in a fun and friendly way. From the bustling streets of downtown to the serene suburbs, we've got the scoop on what makes each area unique. Each week we'll dive into the latest market trends, offer tips for both buyers and sellers, and share insider knowledge to help you make informed decisions. So whether you're a first time home buyer, a seasoned investor, or just curious about some of the Fort Worth charming neighborhoods, you're in the right place. Let's jump into today's episode. Welcome back guys to our podcast, Welcome Home Fort Worth. And we are talking today about tips and tricks. First of all, we're gonna talk about tips and tricks for sellers. And then if you're a buyer and you're more interested in tips and tricks for a buyer, then after the break, uh, that'll be our section on tips and tricks for our buyers today. Yeah, about halfway through the video. So mm -hmm. feel free to skip on, but we'll jump into sellers now. What are we talking about today? So today we're talking about curb appeal. So this is a curb appeal makeover. There you go. Yeah, have you ever heard of that? Makeover for curb appeal? <laughs> <laughs> I've seen it, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool to watch. So some of the key points that we wanna to make today about uh, curb appeal is that it's really important when it comes to selling a house. Yeah, big time. It's, and it's, it, not, it's not often thought about. And it's not that, it's not very costly yeah. sometimes. It can be just a little bitty thing. Sometimes it's just labor, mm -hmm. um, but it can make a difference in how much money you make. Yeah, and we'll, and we'll get in, we've got some actual studies today to talk through that really yes. address like actual money that you will make back yeah. like almost in full from the investment in some of these things. Yeah. So it's really exciting. Which is really, it's very few things are like that. Yeah, so. very few things, uh, very yeah. few remodeling things are like that. Or dollar totally. for dollar, yeah. yeah. So um, for example, let me give you a couple of examples of some situations like this. So a lot of times you'll see people that flip properties mm -hmm. and they do such an amazing job on the interior, you know, with all of the updates and yeah. the flooring and the countertops yep. and everything but they stop and they don't finish out the landscape. Yep. So you'll walk up to the house and from the outside, it looks like a totally different house. Mm -hmm. You go in and it's beautiful and amazing, but every time that happens, there that investor is gonna make less money because they yep. didn't address the landscaping. And so you don't have the, the whole cohesive feel mm -hmm. of how that house yep. really fits with yep. the outside. So a lot of times people will do that. They won't, they won't do the, um, it's pretty minor sometimes. Sometimes it's just mowing the grass and edging. Yep. A lot of times it's just edging. edging. Yep, looks so good when you do it too. Yes, yep. it can make such a difference. It just trims it all up. Yep. It looks well cared for. Mm -hmm. It looks like people have been doing it all along. Or if there's spots where there's uh, missing grass, sure. that's another place yep. where sometimes people won't do anything about that. Mm -hmm. And if they'll either make that into a flower bed, add some rocks, some pavers, some stones, or just fill it in with grass, yep. then that too can make a big difference. Um, things like, uh, we had a property that we had listed and it was a, an estate sale. So mm -hmm. The owner had, was deceased and, and had had a lot of um, trees and limbs and everything overgrown. Yeah. Shrubs were overgrown, hadn't been trimmed in a long time, hadn't been weeded in. There was weeds in the flower beds. Yeah. So for $500, mm -hmm. we have a landscaping company that came out. They trimmed everything. They cleaned out all the flower beds, put in new mulch. Yeah. They trimmed up all of the trees, the shrubs and everything. And that next day, we had an offer on that Love property it. at over 100% of it. the price. Love it. So, I mean, it just makes such a difference mm -hmm. if you can just do the, those kinds of things. And yeah. it's mainly labor. Yeah. Um, you want to make sure, of course, um, that you're um, showing the house to its best. Mm -hmm. That's the whole idea of curb appeal. Yep. And that it really fits in with the rest of the neighborhood. So, you know, if we look at what's your favorite, our favorite ways mm -hmm. of boosting curb appeal. Yeah. Fun fact, this study that we're going to talk about yes. just next, uh, says that 92% of realtors recommend doing landscaping, yes. recommend doing curb appeal upgrades to some degree, yep. which I just thought was like, first off, what's wrong with the 8%? Like y'all get, get with the program. Because <laughs> uh, 92, Why are you it, not doing it's it? a big deal. Like that, yeah. there are very few things yeah. in the industry where the entire industry says we should do this. There you go. Like that is such affirmation to say that this is a big deal yeah. which, and we should treat it that way. Yeah, that makes total sense. But yeah, like what, what, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah, like, that's, what that's would perfect. you, what I would you, it. what would you say to somebody like, if you were like, what have been your favorite memories of Curb Appeal? What are your favorite examples of that? Like, so, what would you go to? So just as a realtor and looking at houses with people, yeah, you know, yeah, with yeah. our buyers. Yeah. So, you know, you get out of the car uh -huh. at the curb and then they turn and they look at the house. Yeah. 
and then they go right for the door. Yeah. So the first place everybody looks is the front door. Yeah. And then they look at the walkway going up to the door. Yeah. And then as they're walking up, they're going to be looking over to the side and the side. Yeah, so it, that it beckons whole, you. There, there's like a good <laughs> 10 minutes that yeah. people are, are in the middle of and seeing yeah. the whole curb appeal process. Yeah. Well, you talk about drive-bys alone, right? Like mm-hmm. I mean, drive-bys are a thing, y'all. Like you may not get showings. Yeah. But you'll probably get drive-bys. Like when somebody sees a sign in the yard or if there's an open house, right? People may not come to the open house, but they will probably drive by the home, right? And so the home is really judged first. I mean, mm-hmm. truly by judged first by the exterior Absolutely. more than it is the interior ever. So it's nice to make a, a good first impression like that. But Yeah. And we want to make sure, you know, that 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 the eye, where the eye's going, that the buyer's mm-hmm. going to be looking, that we've got that address. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and then it looks sharp. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, so talking about the study that we, we've got, I mean, it was it was really kind of um, crazy. It was released about a year ago uh, from this coming March. Um, it basically talked about, it was a study to see um, the cost recovery on outdoor remodeling projects mm-hmm. and how many people really, truly regain the cost of their investment in doing that when they went to sell their home. And what they found, I mean, these numbers, this first number is just shocking. I mean, it's like, no, nobody's nobody's gonna like hearing this, by the way. Nobody's gonna like hearing this because everybody wants to avoid what this number one thing is. <laughs> Here's the deal. There's a 217% return on simple standard lawn care service. Yep. Having somebody come and mow your lawn during, during the course of, uh, you know, a lawn care service come in and mow your lawn through the course of this, you know, getting it ready to sell, mm-hmm. listing it, being on the market through the end of the sale, mm-hmm. 217% return on that investment, right? Yep. So you make your money back in spades in, in what you get back on your um, on, on your home sale. And that's a great point too, because mm-hmm. not just getting it ready and getting the photos yep. and everything taken care of, yep. but continuing the, the whole process as it's showing, yep. as it's going. Because the second you start letting off, I mean, that's just really good, mm-hmm. great thing to point on. The second you start letting off with that, the, the lawn care yeah. service, I mean, y'all, that buyer is going to just start to not like you a little more mm-hmm. and start to kind of be like, I don't know if I like this house mm-hmm. as much. It's not looking as good as it did the they first time. They must be in distress. Must, something, something's going on. Uh-huh. And so it just leads the buyer to start doing it. And then you're going to find that in the buyer's behavior. The buyer may get, you know, skittish and may mm-hmm. go somewhere else. The buyer may just not be like, they might start asking for dumb stuff that, yeah. that, that they wouldn't have if they had just been enamored the whole time with this process right. that you would have gotten a 217% return on your investment in that mm-hmm. lawn care service during the course of that. I just cannot get over that number. 270, more than twice as much as you put into it. Oh, yeah. You get that return. It's just, oh, yeah. that's amazing. And that's such a great, I mean, like this is just such a great statistic. So moving on though, 104% in landscape maintenance. Mm-hmm. So this is like your flower beds and mm-hmm. that kind of stuff, mulch. right? Mm-hmm. Mulch, all that kind of stuff. Overall landscape upgrade. If you're gonna upgrade your landscape and the mm-hmm. look of your yard, um, it's gonna be 100% of a return. Another 100% return, and I love this because I'm big into this, outdoor kitchens. Mm-hmm. And that's super exciting to hear that. Like that, that's a really good investment to make in your home. If you're somebody considering doing that, if you're somebody who who maybe hasn't done that yet, um, here's a good reason to do it. Uh, uh-huh. show, show your spouse this if they don't want it, they don't want to make that investment. Yeah. Hey, 100% return. Um, so to keep that in mind, I guess I guess I, this is the study. I need to make the disclaimer just to be smart here. The disclaimer does need to be, hey, uh, it's got to be local for your area. If you don't have any any other right. outdoor kitchens in your neighborhood, then, then don't ma- your maybe we want to have a conversation about it. Ask somebody like us, we can get you that information. Um, new patios, 95% of your mm-hmm. investment, still a great number. Mm-hmm. New wood decks, 89%. Tree care, 87%. I thought that was interesting. Yeah. Um, 83% on an irrigation system installation. Mm-hmm. Um, and then landscape lighting, 59%. Fire features, 56%. And in ground pool additions, which mm-hmm. is this one, we know this. 56%, y'all. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, something to do. But, but I mean, what that means is like there is a, a true financial benefit to investing in a curb appeal. Absolutely. There's a true financial yeah. benefit to that. And I mean, your home can sell for any more, anywhere from 2% to 8% more, mm-hmm. um, depending on, on the investment that you make and, and how it rates in the neighborhood. Always do, and we probably would need to make the note as well. When it comes to curb appeal, um, if you're in an HOA, you do need to make sure that uh-huh. you're aware of what your HOA uh-huh. tells you. Um, and what you can do, because um, that will get you in trouble with your HOA. Yeah. And so you'll make this great investment, and then you have to rip it all out. Right. You don't do right. That. So. And, the, and it'll make it difficult for the buyer to then be involved with the yeah, HOA. Yeah, exactly. You know, that you talked about tree care. So the thing that I remember is that I've shown several houses where they love the house, love everything about it, but there might be a big dead tree. Yeah. 
either in the yep. back or in the front. Yep. And people overestimate how much that might cost yeah, to get sure. it removed. Yeah. And it would be the deal breaker. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, so if, if, we're, if we're giving you advice, again, we're talking tips today. So mm -hmm. quick and quick and cost-effective tips for how you can up your uh, landscaping. I'm sorry, excuse me, up your curb appeal. Uh -huh. uh, we just talked about landscaping. So, we'll, we'll, you know, we already mentioned edging, you know, mm -hmm. flower beds. Weed your flower beds, um, put mulch in. Yeah, making sure your shrubs and, and trees are kind of uh -huh. maintained well. Um, rocks and gravel don't hurt yep. if you're considering something like that. That's and they're not that thing. expensive. Yep, they're not. Um, something to consider there. But let's talk paint. I think paint's a really yep. exciting topic for folks. A lot of people... Uh, like the idea of paint, they like the idea of the quick fix that makes the house feel like a brand new space. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about paint. What do you think about paint? So again, mm -hmm. local. So yep. if you're painting your house, like it's real trendy to have this turquoise blue. Yeah, it is. Turquoise blue doors. You know, wow. That kind of thing. You're getting you're you're fighting against turquoise blue. That's like our thing. Come on. <laughs> oh my gosh. Who do you think well, you are? There are neighborhoods where it would be very welcome. <laughs> it would be very welcome to have the turquoise blue. Um, a lot of wood frame homes, mm -hmm. a lot of, uh, you know, more antique, uh, historic home neighborhoods yeah. go towards that. Yeah. But if you are in a neighborhood where it's brick mm -hmm. and it's all neutral colors yeah. and I see a lot of brick neighborhoods doing black and white now too. I see a yes, lot of that. Yeah. So see a lot more of the yep. neutral basic colors. Yep. So if you come in and you paint a bunch of turquoise trim mm -hmm. and a turquoise door, that may not fit in that neighborhood, but yep. it would fit in another neighborhood such as yep. Magnolia, the Magnolia sure. area, oh my gosh, yeah. Arlington Heights, yep. you know, that neighborhood over in Fort Worth. Those are all great neighborhoods mm -hmm. to do that. But then you've got neighborhoods like around River Bend Country Club sure. that are brick homes, very traditional. The money that's spent in landscaping there is going to be spent on high-end uh, shrubs, sure. high-end trees, yeah. high-end lighting. Yeah. But it's going to be very calm and very neutral. Yeah. So, yeah, you've got to match. Yeah, you got to match. I think that's good. Match. It, and, and what I think the nice about paint too is that maybe you know, if you're somebody who wants to like feel the freedom to go paint what you want to paint, obviously your HOA may have control of that. If you have an HOA, mm -hmm. if you don't have an HOA. I would just say if you like go, I would say if you want to do it, go do it. But just realize that you may have to paint over it when yeah. you go to sell. Sure. When you want to make it accessible to a, a bigger buyer pool, yes. that will get you more offers. That will get you uh, yeah. higher offers. Just know you may need to paint it. So just it, as you are mm -hmm. making the investment to go paint it the turquoise that you mm -hmm. like or whatever the color is, know that you might need to repaint it when uh -huh. it comes time to do it. And consider if you really want to bring color in and you want to be a little more careful about that, mm -hmm. do it with accents. Do mm -hmm. it with uh, pots. Yeah. Turquoise blue pots. Maybe uh, shutters. Mm -hmm. Maybe things like that. There, there's a ton. I mean, there's a whole uh, – I forget how, how you search for it, but there's a whole uh, renter – Aesthetic, uh -huh. or renter um, upgrades uh, on Amazon, mm -hmm. where if, if you just go there and search, you know, renter wallpaper or whatever, it basically it basically gives you renter friendly wallpapers and things that you can put up that's easy to take down when you need mm -hmm. to move out, mm -hmm. and so it can make a rental home feel, you know, like a like a custom home with right. some of these you know cute things, but then it's easy to take off when you need to move out. So yeah. there's yeah. a lot of options when it comes to that as well. Yeah, and don't, um, don't ever forget the the value of the front door area. Mm -hmm. So if I was going to spend any money, mm -hmm. as long as I kept things mm -hmm. mowed and edged, yep. and then I'd spend the rest of the money on the front door yeah. area. It is. I mean, like, this is the accent wall of your house. Yeah. Like, that, that's what this is. Absolutely. Um, and, and it's just, I, I'm such a sucker for a, a nice, accented, uh -huh. really well done uh, front door. It, yeah. just, it just really draws you to the home, mm -hmm. makes you excited to come walk inside. There's yep. a lot of really cool things that come with it. It could be updated hardware mm -hmm. that you put on the door, a special color. Yep. Make sure everything's pressure washed yep. around the porch. You know, that there's no bugs, no cobwebs. And, you know, have your flowers or your color, your pots, whatever yep. you're going to have, and a, and a mat, you mm -hmm. know, a welcome mat too. Yep. So you can do the whole thing, the lighting, the light bulbs need to be on, yep. you know, as far as they're working. So just really take into consideration that front yeah, door. Totally. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. And if we're talking lighting too, mm -hmm. you just mentioned this, like, mm -hmm. you know, landscape lighting, again, it didn't, didn't get you the, the craziest return on your investment. But what I will say is that especially, um, you know, not only does it help you with your safety feature and people feeling more safe with the home and, and more excited about the safety feature, um, it really helps your home stand out at night. Yeah. You know, if somebody's driving yeah. by, it's, it's not unrealistic to think that somebody would come drive by your home at eight o'clock, you know, 8.30 mm -hmm. if you get on the market um, and, and on their way home from whatever they've been doing that evening, it is not a realistic thing they drive by. And so this helps your home still stand out even in, in that time. So um, not necessarily something that I would recommend you just go invest in mm -hmm. um, unless it's common in your neighborhood. If, if, if you're the only home in the neighborhood without, you know, lighting, you probably need to do that because yeah. um, it will affect your pricing at that yeah, point. It would stand out. Um, it would be it would be kind of a, a thing that'd be like, why don't I get this? Mm -hmm. um, so some, lighting is just just be aware of that with lighting. I think um, lighting can make a big difference, but also mm -hmm. 
Um, it's more of a safety and it's more of a, a feature for nighttime stuff. And, and there, there are some people who, when they do post their listings, yes. um, their listings will be with the nighttime photos. Absolutely. Um, so well, like it's, your it's backyard, a, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times we'll do twilight photos yes. with the backyard. Yeah. So if you have some really great lighting in your backyard as well, you know, then that would be something yeah. to take pictures of. I had a friend of mine, uh, he's not from Texas, but he called, he called those uh, honky tonk lights. Yeah. You got those, those kind of patio bulb lights on uh -huh. your, your patio. Uh, he called them honky tonks. Um, then, you know, th that's something that we can kind of uh -huh. accent in the, in the photos for sure. Yeah, and it creates an environment people love. Yeah. This is something that I, this next point, y'all, I am horrible with this um, because I love the way these look all the time, but I never do them on my homes. Yeah. I need to. Yeah. I, I need to do them so bad because I care. And, it, it, like, it's a function thing. So we'll talk about it, and then I'll tell you the function piece of it because I've got a funny story, but go ahead. So we're talking about mailboxes and uh -huh. numbers, house yeah. numbers. Yeah. You're like, that's such a weird thing to get excited about, dude. <laughs> yeah. It kind of is. But yeah. it does make a difference yeah. in how things look. Yeah. You know, the modern big numbers that look unusual, but it, it really will yeah. modernize a house. It'll, yeah. it'll change the look of the front of it. The the reason it's so exciting is because y'all, for anybody who uses DoorDash or, or Amazon, mm -hmm. like it affects your ability to get deliveries. If you, somebody could not clearly see the fact that you live at blah, blah, blah house, like it's gonna affect your deliveries that you get. <laughs> so that's something to be aware of. That's funny. So those are cost effective things you can do. Now let's just take a quick second and talk about like, do you DIY it? Right. Do you bring in somebody? What do you recommend right. there? I would say, of course, it depends on your level of ability, right? Mm -hmm. um, if if it's going to take you more than a weekend, you might want to think about having that hired. Okay. And the other thing is, is that, um, you know, a lot of the landscapers that you hire, people you hire to do that, they have great connections for stone, for, oh, yeah, sure. for mulch, yep, sure. bulk mulch, yep. you know, that kind of thing. Get um, you a better deal on the buy. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Sure. So so it might not be as expensive as you think, and it mm -hmm. might make it worthwhile by the time you figure up all of your materials yep. and then having them do it. You know, we've got, we've got several landscapers that we recommend that, you know, we'll just ask them to come out and do um, basically a curb appeal improvement, and they mm -hmm. know exactly what to do, and they'll take care yep. of it anything from rocks to paved stones to whatever. So yeah. if you are up for that and you've got the time to do it and you like doing it, go for it. But if it takes you much more than a weekend, then yeah, you're probably going to want to think about maybe hiring that. Yeah, and, and especially if, if you if it's going to take you, well, even if it's going to take you a weekend, but you're not going to do it, like you're not going to see it through to the end. Yes. You're going to halfway good do point. it, three-quarter way do it. Yeah, that's good You're not going to finish it out, y'all. There's just no reason. Like yeah. make the investment, save yourself the time and the energy and the stress of doing it. Yeah. And just go get it done by somebody else because it it will affect your value. And yeah. especially with things like landscaping, y'all. I mean, if you're doing these landscaping improvements in January, mm -hmm. but then it, you're, you're waiting until, you know, summer to sell. I mean, yeah. the, Texas, the temperature, y'all, like... You don't need to be, most people don't need to be out in this middle of summer in Texas doing landscaping projects mm -hmm. because they shouldn't be doing that. It's, it's yeah. a health risk at that point. Yeah. Um, and, and so. It, and we would recommend too, if you're going to do it, not do it right, mm -hmm. or you're going to take too many shortcuts with yeah. it, it'll look kind of shabby. Mm -hmm. It's better to just not do it. Yeah, but, totally. Yeah, yeah. Unless you're going to pay for somebody to do it well. Yeah. 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 All right. So that's a lot of tips and tricks, folks, about um, with ways to improve your, your curb appeal. Curb appeal is really important. Like we mentioned, when it comes to uh, just things that you invest in, landscaping, especially y'all, and, and, and taking care of your lawn, mm -hmm. these are big deals. Mm -hmm. And these really do affect the, the price that you can get when you go to sell your home. And the buyer's first impression of, mm -hmm. of your home when they come to yeah. check and it out. And buyers who fall in love with houses are much more likely to close the deal. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's what you want. So uh, we really appreciate you joining us for this week uh, with our tips and tricks for sellers. Um, we will catch you back next week. Or if you're somebody who's interested in buying, stay tuned. Stay tuned. We're going to be talking about buyers next. Hey, everyone. Real quick before we get back to the show. If you're on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube, we'd love to connect with you. We post a lot of content like this in case you miss an episode, along with more Fort Worth and surrounding suburb, local insights and finds. You can find our team at the Christenberry Group on all social platforms, or you can connect with Jackson and I personally on our Facebook and our Instagram accounts. Just be prepared for lots of pictures of my grandson on either account. Now back to the show. Hi, y'all. Welcome back. Um, if you joined us for the first segment, you heard about tips for sellers, and now we're going to talk about tips for our buyers. Yeah, and so we're talking about making a competitive offer today Yes. and, and how to do that. We believe this coming market for buyers is going to be a little more competitive than at least last year's was. And so we want to make sure that we're kind of preparing folks for, for what that might look like and how you might approach those kind of scenarios. So um, what, you know, give them an overall view of competitive offer situations. What have you experienced when it's like, what has that been like? What are some, some examples of competitive scenarios 
that you've been in when it comes mm-hmm. to helping buyers? So that'll be something like a property in a neighborhood that's real sought after mm-hmm. comes comes up, and it's on the market first day. It's totally remodeled. It's yeah. gorgeous. It's what everybody's been looking for because it's moving ready. Mm-hmm. And that's cute. It's cute. It's cute. We go show it, and you're in line behind two or three other people yep. who have just shown it or are about to show yep. it. Three other agents are parked in the cars on yes. the street. Yeah, the whole yep. thing. you can already tell. Um, that it's going to be a hot house. Mm-hmm. Can we call those hot houses? It's going to be one of those. And so at that point, if you haven't already done your homework or, or taken care of some things ahead of time, then you're going to be behind the curveball. Yeah, big time. And you want to be able to move fast. you got to be able to know what are the things that you have to offer and what's the best you can you can do with your offer at that yeah. point. Yeah, and, and I think... I think Anytime we're talking offers, I want to frame this when it comes to either that the hyper local kind of dynamics of what's happening in that neighborhood. Mm-hmm. So if we're if we're talking about, you know, uh, what you know, first off, if you're in a competitive situation, you may need to understand that you might need to do a lower closing date, um, and so making sure you have that conversation with your lender. Can we do that? Right. Mm-hmm. Um, there are a lot of different things we can talk about uh, in that, but I think. To be competitive, one of the best things that you can do is know the market that you're in in, in the local area, but also know the market that you're in, you know, nationally um, and, and uh, locally as far as the, the county goes, right? Mm-hmm. So what I want to do is I want to refer everybody to our market update episode yes. because I think we 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 covered a ton of these kind of topics in that episode. So if you haven't seen the January, this is, we're filming this in, in um, for for the month of January. So if you haven't seen um, February, excuse me, um, then I, I would highly recommend that you check that out because it's going to be, you're going to need to know those things as we think about your offer that you want right. to build. So right. make sure you make sure you check that episode out if you haven't already. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so you know what, what are the key components to making a really great offer? Yes. So by, we have to start, peop, I mean, folks, y'all, like people want to go see homes when they have not bought finances at all. Yeah. They, they, they love the idea of the home. They love the idea of the neighborhood. They want to go see it. But y'all, it just is not, it's not the best way to do it. Right. The best way to do it is you've got to get financially prepared, not only with your personal finances, but in the way that you will show those finances mm-hmm. to the seller with pre-approval letters mm-hmm. or with proof of fund letters like with cash, if you're doing a cash offer or things like this. Because here's the deal. If you're in a competitive situation, y'all, what's going to happen is you are going to fall in love with the house on a Saturday. You're going to have to go get pre-approved. You may find a great lender who can get you pre-approved in a day or two or on a phone call. Those are great scenarios. Um, but we're going to be behind the ball mm-hmm. when two other people in the time it took you to go get that pre-approval letter uh, or, or, or proof of cash or whatever you need. Y'all, two other people already sent their offers in. Like we missed we missed our our, um, our chance to be first or a chance to be the next one that they got mm-hmm. um, to stand out. And so we don't want you to be behind the ball. We want you to be prepared for the ball. So you got to get pre-approved or proof, you know, have proof of funds, have your ducks in a row so that when you find that home, it's like, let's go now. Mm-hmm. Um, especially if you're a seller, somebody who's also has to sell their home to purchase their next home. Right. It's like, we have got to get that home ready to go so that in our presentation of our offer, we can say, hey, we already have pictures taken. We already have everything ready to go. All that's left is for us, to, is for you to accept our offer and it's going on the market tomorrow, you know, mm-hmm. just like that. Yeah. Because, you know, you have to think about these offers from the perspective of the seller mm-hmm. and the seller's agent. Yeah. So when we get offers in as a seller's agent, we're going to be looking for they come in fast. So that because what that means is you fell in love. Yep. We want buyers who fall in love. Yep. So you, they come in fast. Mm-hmm. It says that you were ready. Yep. So we want people who are, who've got their act together, yep. who know their financing is going to be yep. taken care of. And we're looking for people who will give us the best terms. Mm-hmm. So it's not always just about money, but yeah. it's also about the terms. Yeah, and we'll get into terms here in just a second. Uh-huh. While we're still on the money, I, I really think you also need to know that you're, the, a good listing agent is going to check out the lender that you're using. Abs- and talk to them. Yeah, and talk to them. Yeah. Or talk to your your banker or whatever, your uh-huh. accountant, if you're using proof of funds. Um, because the, we need to know, like, hey, tell me about this buyer. Are, are, what are we thinking about them? Is mm-hmm. this going to be a hard, you know, case to, to close? Is it going to be an easy case mm-hmm. to close? Oh, they're already underwritten. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Tell me more about that. Can you do this closing? You know, what does it look like when you order appraisals? We can go through all these questions with them. And this lets us uh, have a lot more confidence when we, when as a listing agent, we present your offer to our client. It lets us have so much more confidence in that presentation because we can say, yeah, we checked out the lender. We, we did our homework. And so if you, if you didn't pick a good lender, or you pick somebody that we can't get a hold of quickly. Mm-hmm. It's like y'all like that. That's that's a, that's a uh, not a red flag necessarily. Probably too strong of a red flag, but it's something that we're gonna make note of and right. be aware of. Right. 
Well, and if you do, not, some of the online lenders don't assign you a person. Sure. And we don't have a number or an email or anything mm-hmm. to get a hold of a person yep. to confirm anything. Yep. So you kind of keep that in mind, too. I mean, the more secure that you can help that listing agent and that mm-hmm. seller be, then the better your offer is going to go. But and if you're using your own personal bank, you know, big yeah. box banks, like they may not be available on a Saturday yeah. or Sunday time, yeah. depending on the, the right. time of day that you get a, you want to go on a contract. And right. so that can be an issue, uh-huh. just depending. And, so, they may, and they may not be able to get closed in 30 days. You that's know? a whole part of that, too. Yeah. We want a 60-day close. Well, yep. that's not going to compete. Yeah, we were talking, so that's terms. So let's get in terms because okay. terms are important when okay. it comes to the offer. So obviously, you know, everybody knows price. Like everybody wants a good price for their home. They want above, everybody, every seller wants above asking. As much like, as possible. As much as I can get, I want, I want the most, you know. So yeah. price is obviously in there. We're not going to touch too much on price. Price, I'll tell you that as we're building your offer, what I'm going to do for you is I'm going to make sure that you know um, the pricing of the uh, cops in the area yeah. for that the home. Market, right the there. market, yeah. the local market. And the reason for that, you know, it's one because I don't want you to, I really don't want you to offer too much for a home, mm-hmm. um, especially if you're using financing because we're going to have to deal with the appraisal. Yeah. That, that appraisal, we've got to meet value for that appraisal. Um, and so that can happen either through we meet value. And so your, your offer price is what that home is worth. That's a great scenario because there's no more negotiation, no, no more negotiation, excuse me, needed. However, um, we also don't want to present the scenario that is the actually there, we, we came in low, so there's a 10K difference or a 5K difference, and either you've got to come up with that or seller's got to come up with that or halfway to solve that problem. Mm-hmm. And that just creates another um, bump along the road that we don't have to have if we right. offer well. Um, or I want you to know that, hey, your offer is probably going to be a little higher than what it may appraise for. I'm not an appraiser. I don't know what that. I can take a wild guess. Um, or educated guess, I should say. Um, but uh, I can at least tell you, hey, you need to know that you may be, you know, uh, we may have a li- liability mm-hmm. that's just trying to work in, but- You may have a gap. You may have a gap here, so just be aware of that. It may be coming down the pipe, so. Yeah, get you prepared for it just in case. So that's the only thing to know about price, but let's talk like, you know, t- tell me about contingencies, tell me about, you know, t- closing timelines, like tell me about these other things that go into a good offer. So um, you're gonna want to do, if this is the house that you want, if you really want this house and you know you're going to be competing, yeah. then we're going to tell you to go all in. Yeah. And you've got to determine what all in means. Yeah. We'll, we'll ask you questions to help you determine what that means. Yep. But you can't do the whole, well, I would go all the way to 350 but let's offer 340 yeah. And let's just see. It, when you're competing, you can't do that playing around. You have to go all the way to the end. Yeah, and I think people expect, the reason why I hear most folks want to do that is because they expect that the seller will say, well... Yeah. Um, They'll come back. The, they expect the seller to come back. And y'all, the, the reality is you are never guaranteed to come back. Right. A good listing agent will do that. I'll be honest with you. They should do that. Um, but they don't always do that, especially when they got 20 offers or something mm-hmm. like we had in 21. Right. Yeah. Um, or if just, yours is low. Yeah. If yours is low, it's <laughs> like, well, I'm going to go you know, talk to this person over here. Um, so that's the, yeah, you need to be aware of, of kind of the, the pricing with that. So. Yeah. And be ready to go. And so we usually ask our people questions like, if you don't get this mm-hmm. because of this offer, yeah. if you knew that a, a different amount would have gotten it for yeah. you, will you be okay with yeah. that? And so bottom line is you gotta be okay with where your line's gonna stop. Yeah. So we ask questions like that. So you know, as we're crafting the offer, we're gonna be asking you lots of questions to bring out what are your end, how far will you go? Yeah. How far do you wanna go? And, what are you comfortable with? And just so you know, not to make you, we don't like, we are, you know, I don't know, taking pleasure from the fact that you're spending so much money. Right. It's not to get you to do that. It's to say, hey, if you want this house, it's going to take mm-hmm. this. It's just to make you aware of, you have told us that you want this house. In order to get this house, you've got to come I'm, I'm From everything I'm hearing, multiple offers, from what I'm hearing from the listing agent, I'm, I, am, I believe as your agent, as your advisor, that this is where we need to go to, mm-hmm. to, in order to get that. And, and if that's not what you want to do, yeah. Then we need to all be okay with that. Yeah, totally. Just yeah. be real okay with it. Be okay with it. And that's and that's great. And that's yep. what we want. So yeah, that that's our whole goal is to help you. We just see it happen a lot where people go, Oh my gosh, if I'd known I only had to go five thousand more dollars, yeah. we would have got it because we wanted it so bad. Right. So that's that's to save that scenario. Yeah, totally. Yeah, so you know, with contingencies, mm-hmm. there are a couple options here mm-hmm. when it comes to contingencies. There there are things that um and what is know, a contingency? Well, so there's a lot How would you explain there's a lot that of different so most common is probably contingent on the home sale. 
right? Um, so the, you know, somebody uh, somebody who has to sell their home before they can buy the home that they've offered, mm-hmm. right? So that's you, that's usually the most common contingency. That's actually not true because really the most common contingency is the third party financing, financing addendum, which is just sure. the fact that this you know offer is subject to me gaining financial approval and uh, from my mortgage right person, and so. Um, that's a contingency because you're contingent on a loan. A cash offer looks better because it's not contingent on a loan, mm-hmm. right? Um, as long as pricing is close and that kind of stuff. Um, well, gosh, what else? I mean, there's, there's just there's a couple of, the appraisal Con- contingencies. Contingent on appraisal. You've got, you've got that yeah. kind of stuff. There's a lot of options in there. What I would just say is um, uh, you uh, the least contingent you can be, the stronger you look. There you go. That's, that's, that's just the reality. Yeah. The least contingent yeah. you can be, the stronger you look. The stronger you are. The stronger um, the offer that, yeah. that is. Yeah. If, if you have to buy your home, or you have to, excuse me, you have to sell your home before you can buy your next home, that's just the reality. Like, we just know that that's going to be the case. We may lose out on some offers mm-hmm. uh, if we're in competitive scenarios because of that, that, that scenario. We're going to do everything we can mm-hmm. to make that not a thing. Like I said, we're going we're gonna to get your pictures done. We're going to get every single mm-hmm. thing done so that literally... All, like, and I'm going to tell the listing agent, hey, the second you hit accept, we're on the market tomorrow. Like, I want you to understand that we're ready to go. Mm-hmm. You know, everything's here is our marketing package. We are already ready to go on the MLS, all kind of stuff, right? So we're going to do everything we can to make that not a thing, but it's it's going to be a little bit of a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and, so, it, and so what we do is we try to balance that mm-hmm. with better terms yeah. in other areas. Yeah, if you need to. And so yeah. that's, you know, if we're talking terms... Um, just so you know that there's three things that usually are fees, if you will, that come up in, in the process of a, of a home sale. Uh, title policies are one of those, which mm-hmm. is kind of an insurance policy for the, mm-hmm. the for the title, making sure it's, it transfers well. Um, there are uh, title policy, um, who's paying for, if there's a home warranty, that's an option as well. Mm-hmm. I'm, I can't remember the title policy, home warranty. Sometimes uh, it's survey. Surveys in there as well, yep. Yeah, um, sometimes it's a... You know, we look at down payments too. Sure. How much cash are you putting yeah. down? That's sure. a stronger, stronger buyer. Yeah, they're more in. Yeah, and more access to funds. I think those are it, though, right? I, yeah. I, I mean, obviously closing. Earnest, earnest money. Also. Earnest money, option fee. Those, those are things that will meet yeah. every contract. You can put a lot more money there, and those are part of that too, for mm-hmm. sure. Um, there are strategies that that we can really employ if you want to get kind of aggressive with your offer mm-hmm. that affect the earnest money and the option fee for sure. Yeah. Um, your closing timeline, if you can do an earlier close, mm-hmm. if you can get the seller out of there in 15 days versus 30 days, mm-hmm. that's really contingent on your lender. That's more of a lender question because right. um, it's, it's based on how fast they can get your loan going. Yeah. And there's um, also leasebacks. Mm-hmm. leasebacks. So some, sometimes the seller wants to stay in the house for a week after yep. it closes so they can still finish moving out. Yeah. Things like that that we can find out ahead of time mm-hmm. and then write the offer up to match it. Yeah. Those are other ways we can make yeah. a sweet offer. Lots of options, y'all. So there, there are a lot of ways to do this. And again, like... The best way to, to have this to, to talk about this is just you've got to have a conversation with somebody who who knows this stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you may know a little bit about it, that's awesome, but you got to have a conversation with somebody like this because we can we can say, well, hey, we can do it this way, we can do it this way, we yeah. can do it this way. Right. We can advise you on your options. We can help you figure those things out because that's what what somebody like us is supposed to do for you. But we're going to craft your best offer yep. depending on your goals, depending on how fast <laughs> you can go in, how far you can go in, mm-hmm. um, and then it's negotiation time. Yes, and negotiations are so fun. Um, they're really, really, they're they're very <laughs> dynamic. They're very, um, every agent does negotiations different. We yep. have a whole negotiations podcast, so if you're interested in, in how uh-huh. we approach negotiations, um, I encourage you to go listen back. I think that was back in the month of 2023, November, December, or something like that. Yeah, it was one of our first ones. Um, last and so I would, I would encourage you to check that out um, because I think that there's a lot of, what different ways to do negotiation. But the thing that you as the buyer would need to know in negotiations is you just want to make sure your agent, well, you want to make sure you and your agent are on the same page. Yep. You want to make sure that you and your agent have clear communication and that um, you have told your agent how involved you want to be. Do you want to hear every single little thing? Mm -hmm. Do you want your agent to be kind of asking questions on your behalf based on, you know, y'all getting on the same page? It it just, it, your, your comfort level with that is what you want to make sure is, is known. Yep. Absolutely. And, and this is where the trust comes in and make sure that you hired an agent that you think can represent you. Any common mistakes you see with offers? I mean, that's uh, obviously the common mistake with offers, I mean, truly is just an agent doesn't write it the right way. Um, yeah. I mean, that's just, you know, doesn't yeah. doesn't do the do, 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 due diligence of checking a right. MLS to make sure that they have the right details for everything. Yeah. So and, I mean, when, and when we see that as a listing agent and you see those come in and you, you've got seven offers that come mm-hmm. in on a property and you've got, you know, 
two of them that are real close together yeah. in price and terms. Yeah. And you've got one that's been written up real sloppily and mm -hmm. wasn't no attention to detail. Yeah. You know, you're going to lean towards the one oh, yeah. that's lit, well, written up right. Because the other ones are dangerous. Like that can well, get dangerous down the line. Yeah, you don't know as what's you're going negotiating on. stuff. That, yeah. that can be really yeah, that can cause problems yeah. for your client. You don't want to. Do yeah. That. So you want an agent who'll you know do it. Right, well, this is a legally binding contract. Yes, you yes. know, a purchase contract. Well, and, and in our scenario, like we don't do that. I mean, we we know how to, but we actually have a whole you know section of our business that is trying to make sure that we are complying correctly right. with this. That are checking and balancing yeah. to make sure our contracts are written in, in the legally sound way, um, because we're only human, right? And yeah. so um, that I think that that's a great thing that we have access to that uh -huh. some other agents do have access to yeah. as well that yeah. they choose to we choose to opt into that. That's not something that every agent has to do, mm -hmm. um, but we want that kind of review and what we want that kind of um, yeah, compliance. That, yeah, over oversight to make yeah. sure that we uh -huh. are you know. We're not lawyers, but we have good contracts for our clients. Absolutely. Um, but that's more of an agent thing. So it is. What would you say for the for the for the buyer themselves? For the buyer, when it comes to their so, offer, um, common mistakes probably are not really knowing their numbers. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Not being really comfortable yeah. with um, this is going to. If I offer this much, yeah. it's going to mean I have this. It's going to be my monthly payment. Yeah. Yeah. A monthly payment piece. Making yeah. sure they're comfortable with that. Well, and for me, my experience has been a lot of the the buyer. You know. The, the open house is usually when it happens. The buyer gets in love with the house. Uh -huh. Can't wait to put this offer in. This is going to be my, 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 we're going to get this house. And then like, you know, an hour later you hear from their agent, well, we actually didn't realize how much that monthly payment was going to be, yeah. you know, or, or yeah. those kinds of things. And yeah. so being that buyer that, that gets all in just to realize that, oh, you, you couldn't actually yeah. get that home that you were thinking about having. Yeah. So. That and then um, any kind of closing costs. Mm -hmm. So really the buyer knowing, you know, you need to know your numbers as far as, what cash do I need to have available? Yeah. Do I have that cash yeah. available? Because if you do, then you're confident. Yes. You you know that, okay, I love this house. Yeah. I can afford this house. Yeah. I know what my monthly is. I can do this. So yeah. let's do it. And I think just going back to what you said originally too, which is just not jumping all in. Like yeah. If, if it's yeah. the house you want, jump in. Yeah. Um, the, the buyer coming in at, you know, that little hesitancy you have where I, I don't want to get screwed or, you know, that kind of stuff. And it's uh -huh. like, hey, like, I understand. I, I get it. Like, I, I, I totally understand that desire. Mm -hmm. It's just like, you know, are you gonna be if you went three hundred two and that winning offer was three hundred five? Like, are you, how does three k difference feel to you? Yeah, um, was that worth the the pride that you saved there to do that? Yeah. If it is, great. Then we know that. Yeah, um, and that's and that's totally okay because it's it's your home purchase, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it's just gonna yeah. it's gonna make sense for you. And so. it go, yeah, it goes to situation making yeah. sense situationally. You know, is is this the house you want? Yeah. And you know. Are you okay with having to go back out there and find another house? Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah totally. Mm -hmm. Just got to jump in. Yeah, just got to jump in and know your numbers. Yep, got to do it. Know your numbers. Feel very on top of numbers. That, that's a big part of how we approach buyers in our team. Yeah, it is a lot of making sure they feel really confident on how much money is going to mm -hmm. need to be due when and all that kind of stuff. So and having a good lender that that we can all talk with. Yeah. That can explain those numbers to the yeah, to, totally. to you is really important yeah. too as a buyer. Yeah, we did a whole episode with Jefferson. Yeah. Uh, one of our preferred lenders. And man, he he really worked it down and shows you kind of what, what that looks like. So yeah. highly recommend that episode as well. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's a lot of high level offer writing ideas. Again, a lot of this is so specific to the individual. And so really, if you're somebody mm -hmm. considering offers or considering wanting to know more about, you know, how your specific scenario might you know, uh, affect your offer writing abilities, um, let us know. We're glad to give you kind of some questions mm -hmm. and, and or give you some feedback, excuse me, and some ideas about, mm -hmm. you know, what you might be in, into for that. So yeah, some good advice and hook you up with some good lenders and yep. yeah, get you connected. Yeah. And if you've got experiences with offers where you were just, you know, you were 3K shy or 2K, we'd love to hear that too. So yeah. let us know your stories because it helps us to know and have, and have more uh, I mean, stories to share with folks that, that are in those similar scenarios. It's, it's really right. helpful for folks. So Absolutely. Well, cool. Well, we really appreciate your time today. We appreciate you joining us for Welcome Home Fort Worth. Uh -huh. It's always that's, a joy. That's your tips and tricks today. There you go. Tips and tricks. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you have a great rest of your week. We'll see you back next week. See you next time. Hey, thank you so much for watching the podcast today. If this has been valuable for you at all, we sure could use your help getting the word out to more people. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, go ahead and give us a follow and consider taking just maybe two minutes um, to leave us a review. Both do wonders for our show with the algorithm and on both platforms, all you gotta do, head over to our show page on Spotify, hit three dots and select rate. 
and on Apple, all you gotta do is just scroll down to the show and say, leave a review, so you just click that. If you're seeing this on Facebook or Instagram, a like or comment puts all the good vibes out in the algorithm for us. And on YouTube, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you can be notified whenever we post a new episode. Join us again next week for more Fort Worth housing news and updates. Until then, y'all have a great week.